hello queens and welcome back it is queen of queen she me and today i'm here to come to you guys with a different video for my channel today um this is actually a video that i've been wanting to come to you guys for quite some time and actually just not even just here solely on my platform here on youtube but just across the board for a lot of people who are like myself deal with mental health um you know, I'm not going to say issues because I don't feel like they're an issue, but a lot of us, and especially in particular the African American community, I know we all have do suffer from some form of mental um, illness or ailment or however you would like to put a name to it. Um, for me, especially, and if you guys know, say I'm trying not to get too emotional because I just really just want to come on here and just talk to you guys about my own personal experience with your mental health and how important it is to actually take care of your mental health. I know a lot of us become so focused, especially around the new year, with really wanting to have new year resolutions and make sure that our health is on point as far as like financial goals and everything of that sort. But how many of us actually take the time to just sit down and just actually just take care of our mental health? And our mental health is so important because it ties in with our mind, body, and spirit. All three are cohesive and you, you can just not be 100% without all three parts, your mind, body, and spirit operating at 100% or at its best capacity. For me, you guys, I battle with anxiety with the onset of depression. And thank God that it's not the other way around because I think it would really be a lot, I think it would really be difficult for me to actually just be able to function throughout the day normally because when you are depressed it is just it's just so crippling like some days you will literally feel like you cannot do anything or like you want to do things but then you feel like you can't do them you just feel like you're just stuck like you're just locked just held down and you just are just pretty much just in this state of just downness of just being sad just self-pity hurt just however it just may come across everyone experiences depression differently my anxiety it comes along with depression and you guys i have been battling with my anxiety with the onset of depression for years ever since that i would say um i would probably say probably around the time when my mom and dad were actually separating and that was around God, that was like late 90s. We moved here in 99. We moved to Florida in 99. And as a child, I didn't realize that I was actually going through this myself, nor did I actually even realize to even mention it to my mother at the time um, either. Thank God for my mom, you guys, because a lot of people are not able to talk to their parents about a lot of things or pretty much have that open door policy with that line of respect so I do thank my mom I do appreciate you mom I just want you to know that because you guys I'm telling you a lot of days I wouldn't have probably made it without her um without her even realizing it and when you're a kid a lot of times you cannot in a sense put to words how you are feeling a lot of times um I would just channel it as just being weird I should say and I say weird because you start feeling and having all these different emotions and then you'll start feeling like well why am I having them should I be having these feelings and again feeling weird like why am I having these emotions and no one else seems to be experiencing these same emotions that I'm having that's how I perceived as a child was that I was weird you know that I shouldn't be feeling these emotions or that these emotions that I'm having are wrong where in a sense they were right for me to have them because when you're seven, eight years old and you're moving from one side of the country to another and your parents are separating and then on top of that, you're moving from one form of culture into another type of culture. That is a lot for a child to actually grasp or even come to terms with because again, you're a child, you're just following your parents and you're just growing up wherever you are being placed at. So. Not to say that my mom didn't make the best decision of her life with moving us from California. No, it was one of the best decisions she could have ever made because honestly, I don't know where or who I would have be right now if I probably would have stayed out in California, whatever the case may be. But you guys, anxiety and depression is real. And I started noticing as a kid that a lot of times I would have these emotions of anger. I would just be just randomly angry and... Well, I couldn't say randomly angry, but I would just feel like, why am I here? What is my purpose? What am I doing? Like, am I loved? Am I, do, do people care? Like, those were literally the 
feelings that I was having at like you know as an early child up into my preteen years and the older I got the more I actually just seemed to just suppress it and <clears throat> and one form of suppressing my anxiety um and was not realizing it was by drinking I started drinking at the age of probably like 15 or 16 years old that's hella young you guys and my mom actually found out because she found something in my bedroom and um you know and my mom just pretty much like I said my mom has always been very supportive and she wrote me a card I'll never forget this she wrote me a card and she wrote and put the most beautiful words in there just pretty much just explaining to me that you know you don't need this to feel like you're somebody and um I wish I still had that card to this day but I don't have it now but you guys just knowing that my mom cared about me I think that's what helped me get through a lot of my emotions that I was actually trying to process at that time in my life oh all right y'all didn't plan on coming on here getting teary-eyed but that's what's happening and so um just knowing that my mom was pretty much as supportive as she was um I guess helped me to get through it over the years but then as I got older you start going through different experiences you know with friends with family with you know different relationships that you may have boyfriend girlfriend um just even too just like with life um career changes um I started working at the age of 15 as well so I've been working for almost oh god uh, I've been working for 11 years now <laughs> as a kid um, with anxiety and depression in the sense I was honestly just internalizing a lot of my emotions and just honestly just dealing with it on my own one of the ways and I've gotten back to it now that I'm older in my adult life is journaling I did not realize how much I missed journaling until a couple of young ladies that I follow they actually started sharing their journaling you know daily on their social media platform and one was a love bible journaling challenge and i love that from from shay lisa she was so that that i love that challenge i really did enjoy it it really did help me a lot and then another young lady um shan i follow her um for a lot of yoga inspiration just a lot of spiritual inspiration as well and um she does a lot of journaling as well so i just decided to just started really just getting back into that and it has helped me so much so if you're one who deals with some form of mental illness i would highly recommend journaling because it just gives you somewhere to get all those thoughts out of your head and onto a piece of paper if you're walking around with all these thoughts and not able to actually express your emotions to people or if you're afraid that you're going to be judged which i know that i too have you know have had to deal with that with the fear of you know if i put it down on paper will someone actually pick it up and read it you know i have to get past that because if i need to actually write something and get it down and out of my mind onto a piece of paper in spite of how I might be feeling that day that's what I need to do so journaling is journaling is definitely a good therapeutic way to help with the anxiety and depression okay so fast forward to now um 2018 you guys I went and decided to seek therapy about two years ago and this was around my last semester of college and uh, well actually leading up to it and um that made me actually decide to go ahead and seek someone to talk to about my anxiety now i knew that i had depression honestly initially i knew i had depression i knew i had depression i went through bouts of depression for a while so it would be at sometimes for days sometimes it'll be for weeks sometimes it would just last for however last it would decide to last and you guys those were like some of the darkest times ever and i wish if i would have just had the strength and the courage to go and talk to someone back then i would have i really wish i did have that courage and that strength to actually do it and that just goes to show you that it took me over the course of about almost 20 years to finally just decide to go and actually talk with someone about my anxiety and depression and so I decided to do that because I was getting ready to graduate. I was finally beginning to a better place to where I wasn't, in a sense, living from paycheck to paycheck. You know, I was guaranteed, you know, my 40 hours every week. And I was making a better pay than I had been making previously all the other years um, with my other jobs. I was pretty much just making the bare minimum. So, 
yes um i was always just stressed out um especially with school too as well i was a full-time college student i was on, partially online and on campus and with doing that a lot of times you have other additional campaign sites to have with your courses so it was a lot i was pretty much teaching myself in order to graduate it's pretty much if you're an online student you teach yourself in order to graduate you know i mean the teacher gives you the curriculum but honestly the student teaches themselves and then on top of that i was working a full-time job with barely any pay um before leading up to actually going to get therapy so feathering all those in that really did um play a big role in my anxiety and depression as well so when i did finally see you know um therapy for it i finally um i actually talked with my girlfriend I talked with Alexa about it. That was the first person I talked to about it because I really wasn't ready to talk to my mom about it. I, I just really was not in an emotional place to talk to her about it. I just really didn't know how I was going to feel with talking to her about it. Not thinking that she was going to judge me or anything like that, but knowing my mom and I know my mom, I know she was going to be feeling like, why hadn't you mentioned it to me sooner? You know, and that's just normal for a parent because, honestly, you know, if your parent loves you and cares for you, they're going to want to actually be there for you, you know, through any hardship that you're going through and try to be as supportive as possible. But I just, I just really just wanted to talk with Alexa first. Just, I guess, to just share, you know, just really and truly how I was feeling. Um, Because Alexa, we've been together for seven years and she's seen a lot of um a lot of my ups and downs, especially with my anxiety and depression. So she knows firsthand, like what I have gone through so after I talked with her about it I finally talked to my mom about it she didn't know she I guess as a kid when your parents are separating it channels as an anger um so I guess it's how she looked at it as me being angry and I was angry for a little while but not super duper long thank god um but yeah I was angry for a little time but then I got over all that, you know, with my parents and them separating and stuff. Because, again, it's beyond my control. I'm just a child. So, yeah. So, once I finally did talk to my mom about it, that's when I finally went and decided to seek therapy for my anxiety and depression. Okay, you guys. So, why am I sharing my anxiety and depression story with you guys? Because, again, this is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I feel in sharing my story that it would help other young ladies as well who are silently suffering from anxiety with depression. Now, not everyone has both of them. But with me, I do because... Um, come to find out that when I have a lot of stress, it triggers my anxiety. And if my stress is very, very high, like if I'm under a lot of stress, be it work, family, or whatever the case may be, um, it can trigger my depression. So that's why um, she diagnosed me with anxiety with the onset of depression because not necessarily I am... Um, depressed and i must say that I'm, I'm not i'm not one to just honestly just be sad and i don't feel sad all the time but i will have some form of anxiety so i learned a lot about that i learned a lot of um ways to actually deal with your anxiety the best way for me to cope with my anxiety you guys is to honestly just get away have some form of quiet time not necessarily me time not saying i'm doing some other kind of um work or anything like that when i say me time like for me i mean like i am doing my yoga practice i'm doing some form of meditation i am praying or i am journaling so for me those are my ways with actually coping with my anxiety and prayer for me is definitely a, a big one because you can pray anywhere any time of the day you don't have to worry about you know anybody you can just pray if you need to pray and i just find that for one prayer does help i mean i'm a am a believer of god i've always been a believer of god so prayer for me it really does help you know a lot of people oftentimes will be looking to hear something from god i mean if you hear him that's good but for me i pray i pray and i just ask god to give me the strength to remove any doubts or fears that i may have and i find that a lot of times with anxiety that's what triggers people's anxieties a lot of doubts and fears that we may have of ourselves for ourselves i know exactly for me um one of my fears i've come to realize is being financially stable and I'm not saying i was trying to make it a uh, um a thing but i guess growing up and seeing you know first of all we live in a single parent household with no financial support or even state support nothing i mean yes he was ordered for child support but of course we didn't get that but that is okay 
but I think with seeing my mom doing the best that she can with the one income that was coming into the household trying to raise two children who she's moved with her own money from California all the way to Florida, you know, I think subconsciously it actually implemented a lot of things into my subconscious that again not saying that my mom did it but just from watching and going through certain experiences growing up and some hardships you know um it kind of in a sense put that financial um worry in me subconsciously and i started realizing that probably this past year in 2017 so it's very important for you to really pay attention to your mental health because a lot of things that happen to us a lot of times are still within us if we have not already acknowledged it to begin with so again 2017 for me was a lot of just self-discovery um reflection self-examination and just really just getting to the root of a lot of things that were still buried within myself that i had not fully recognized and a lot of it really has affected my mental health without me realizing it and so that's why with 2017 i have really just decided to just really just dive in and just really start taking care of myself mind body and spirit like you have to take care of all three of those your mind body and spirit in order to have the ultimate mental health yeah you guys so if you suffer from some form of anxiety or depression i would highly recommend that you go and seek some form of therapy or to speak to a doctor or someone who could actually help you with coping or actually overcoming your anxiety and depression because with me i don't want to cope with my anxiety and depression i want to overcome it i want to actually shed it away from me and be done with it i do not want it to become a part of my life and it's already in a sense been a part of my life for the the last 20 years without me knowing it and then actually recognizing it over the last couple of years so yes this is something that i want to eradicate from my life i do not want to be in my life i do not want it i do not want to have anxiety i do not want to have depression so that's why i've been doing a lot of health pretty much lifestyle changes for myself because i see that it has been making positive effects with me with my relationships with my personal relationships just with just with my life overall it has really just been a positive transformation since i have really been trying to take better care of myself all right so i okay so i graduated from high school in 2009 and then after that i joined the military i did the military i did my contract i did that whole shebang bang while in the military i was reserved i was not active and so when i moved back i was trying to find work you know get reestablished, get back into school and all those other kind of things so again financial hardship worries stress how i'm going to take care of myself with all those factors it honestly started triggering a lot of my anxiety and i had moved back here i was staying with one of my good friends and um stay with her for a while and then wound up moving in with another friend because you know have differences and then i wound up moving out and getting my own place and so um around that time and alexa had probably been hanging out had really honestly been friends for a while and has um not too long been dating and then we had um decided to move in together alexa doesn't didn't know about my anxiety you know or whatever because honestly i knew i had it but i just really just hadn't honestly shared it with anybody not with my close friends like literally my best friends didn't even know like until after I went to therapy and I actually was addressing a lot of things and she even recommended, she was like, you need to tell your friends so that way if they really do care about you, they can be as supportive as possible. So thank you. I love my friends. They know who they are and that's all that matters. With me, one, moving back here and then trying to find a job because for the first two years after high school, I did not technically work. I was unemployed and I was a full-time college student and still in the military. So around that time, I was just honestly just on work study, getting my unemployment and a um, full-time student, just trying to survive and to make it until I could actually just find a regular job. And honestly, that's when a lot of my anxiety and depression started kicking in. It really did um, for a while. It was tough because um i couldn't find any work and i just could not find work you know honestly when you first graduate you know people are going to want you know experience because again you guys have to realize i was not a college graduate at the time i was only a high school graduate so as a high school graduate 
in college, working work, study, on unemployment, trying to find a full-time job to suffice for myself. And you need, I remind you guys that I literally live six to eight hours away from my family. I have one aunt here and my uncle, and that's it. So besides my friends which do who do not live here locally either you know i pretty much was going through a state of just feeling alone i was feeling alone i was feeling stressed out i was trying to just make ends meet honestly and again me and Alessa had just moved in you know and i didn't want that burden being all on her that's not her responsibility you know but Honestly, it wasn't even a burden on her. I just wanted to just be able to do more. And that was another thing, too. I was trying to do too much too soon. And you have to just learn to just take each day as it comes. And I've learned that over the years, you guys. And so, yeah, so the first two years of me moving back here, I was honestly depressed. I was the Depressed. I wasn't talking to anyone about it honestly besides Alexa um I wasn't talking to my family about it and again I hadn't talked to my friends the only thing that I was honestly doing was sitting in a house all day long looking for work and just being depressed and sad because I just felt like I was not doing anything with my life well in a sense I was I'm going to school full-time damn it working part-time as on work study so I mean I'm still doing something I guess in a sense too measuring myself against what I thought I should have been doing and I wasn't reaching those standards so I, in a sense I was mentally beating myself up as well you guys so with anxiety it can it can be a lot of things that can trigger it and then it can be a lot of things that can actually worsen it and subconsciously and internally I was just beating myself up I was just always beating myself up I was just like you can be doing so much more you can be doing so much better you know you're tired of sitting here in this house while you're sitting in this house looking at these four walls all day it's nothing on tv it's not helping you any you know, like all my friends that I had back then honestly we don't hang out now because again you know things change your taste change your lifestyle changes and honestly at that time you guys literally those first two years when I moved back to Pensacola I was literally drinking myself I was just drinking myself to death I was literally becoming an alcoholic I really was because I was just trying so hard to suppress all of those feelings and those emotions that I was having because again I was not seeking any help for it or even honestly talking to anyone about it either the first two years I was just partying and drinking that's all that I was doing I was just in a sense I guess just trying to run away from my problems and you can't run away from them. the only way to overcome anything is to just confront it head on and even right now I was sitting down filming this video <laughs> it's still emotional for me to talk about but I feel like it needs to be done for me so that way it can just finally be done. I can just get it off my chest. And two, to just let other people know that, you know, it is real. It is really real if you do not seek help for your anxiety or depression, whichever it is that you may be battling with. And even if you may not even know if it's either one of the two, I'm telling you, if you're feeling some kind of way and internalizing a lot of things and are just really feeling in a dark place, you need to go and seek help. And I know... In particular for the African American community, we hate to talk about mental illnesses. We look at it as an ailment. We look at it as like a bad omen. It's just like one of those things that you just do not talk about. And I just feel like so many of us suffer because we do not talk about things. And thank God again that my mom was the type of mom where we could go and talk to her about anything. But for me, again, as a child, I didn't know that I was going through something like this. So if I was able to understand or communicate that to her believe me I would have because my mom knows I talk to her about everything I really don't sugarcoat anything I'm very blunt I'm honest and that's just how I've always been yeah so the first two years I was literally drinking myself to death I really was I really really was like I literally would and and I would just really just drink I really would like I remember we would just go out and I saying I didn't have a good time with my friends and stuff like that but for me going out for me was just like an escape it was just like a moment for me to just not think about all my problems what I wish I had or what I wish I could be doing at that time and 
now I couldn't I couldn't dare result revert back to that like no way like even now like I'm 26 and at that time when I moved back here I was only 20 yeah so I had I was 19 and was going on 20 and so from from 20 to 20 to 23 I was really battling with my anxiety and depression this was before I had even went to go again and seek therapy I did not go for therapy until I was 24 two years ago <sighs> y'all it, honestly, I feel if I would have probably went and spoke with someone sooner, I think, too, it would have kept from a lot of issues occurring because it does affect your relationship. It does because your emotions are all over the place. Some days you're high, some days you're low, and some days you just don't know where you're at. And so some days you're just mad as hell, you're pissed off, or you're aggravated, or you're sad, you're down, and you don't know why you feel that way. So it does take a toll on your partner, your spouse, if you are not communicating with them what it is that you're going through or how you are feeling. So that way they too can try to better understand and be as supportive as possible as well. And in a sense, not feel like that they have done something to you for you to react act that way to them where in a sense you are just internalizing your emotions and not expressing that to them they need to understand what is going on because if you want them to be a part of your life and in a sense be able to help you you have to talk about it communication is key after about the first two three years of moving back and i was doing a whole lot of drinking i mean literally y'all i kept a bottle of tequila in the house i had you know those big size bottles like this is the bottom of the bottle and this is like the top of it. You know, one of those big ones that you get. And I would just get it out of the Jose Cuervo. And I would just literally sit in the living room and just drink it straight. And I don't know if that's too much to be sharing with you guys. But if I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be honest. And I was. I was just literally drinking myself to death. I was losing weight. I was barely eating. Like... I would cook food and stuff like that, but if I was in the house during the day by myself and I was sad, I would not eat. I would literally not eat. I would cook dinner, um, you know, so that we could have something to eat for dinner, but then I would still just go right back to drinking. And so, like, yes, I was just, like, literally just going to school, working part-time on my little work-study job, and just being depressed and sad, you guys, and just internalizing a lot of my emotions because I just honestly feel like no one could understand or relate or fathom what it is that I'm going through or two I was embarrassed I didn't know how to actually deal with it or how to process it and sometimes it just makes you feel like that you're just out there like you're just one of the other people who are just out here who don't know what the fuck that they're doing but while I just got tired of feeling that way I really did I just got so tired of feeling sad and down and just just not feeling happy I just I just really did got tired of not feeling happy okay so fast forward you guys um so after the first two years um my drinking had started subsiding some I was still drinking but nowhere to how I was drinking before you guys and I mean like I would just stay up unless we go to bed and again I would just be up drinking and crying literally I'll be sitting in the living room with my tequila bottle a shot glass and watching tv and crying and I couldn't even tell you or honestly even explain why I was feeling that way. Or I just felt like I couldn't explain why I was feeling that way. So um, fast forward about um, to about my age. Okay, so at that time I was like 22, 23. So 23, um, I was doing a lot better. I was working a different job. I was still mm, not making a lot of money. Honestly, I was just making, I was honestly making less than minimum wage I think at that time. And, um, and that was like seven dollars and some change and again I have a household to take care of I'm in a relationship and I'm a full-time student trying to put myself through college too like some months I wouldn't have financial aid so that was a big stress I know a couple of semesters I had no textbooks but still passed my classes I, that's just by the grace of God and yeah but I was just so determined that I was going to graduate nothing was going to stop me nothing was going to stop me not even my little jobs that I was working and so at that time I was working at the Goodwill and again I was making like less I was making less than eight dollars an hour I was working less than 38 hours in a week <laughs> so y'all do the math it wasn't a lot of money and so then that too I still was dealing with that stress but around that time I started talking more about you know my emotions and how I was feeling especially with my um my girlfriend Alexa again um 
you know again too you know you go through things in your relationship and y'all mind now we've been together for seven years so we've been through a lot together and people fail to realize too that when you're growing in a new relationship that you are going to go through some hardships together and you're going to find out some things about each other that you may or may not like and that's just being honest and i mean that's even with people who have been married so if you talk to people in your family who have longevity in their marriage they will tell you the exact same thing there are going to be some things that you like and don't like about each other and some things you're going to have to either accept or just do away with so yeah so that did too play a part of it not a major part but a part of it and so around that time i was really getting into a better place i was really trying to get back you know a better form a better relationship with god because i had been out of the church for a little bit and y'all i just thank god for my mom keeping us in the church as long as she did because honestly if she hadn't, I don't even think I would be covered like I am right now. And I just thank God for that. I just thank God that I do have a relationship with him and that I do know how to pray, seek him, follow him, and be of him. And so around that time, I was coming to a better place. And um, I was too learning that, you know, you have to start trusting in yourself and believing in yourself and i was starting to shed a lot of things around that time around that time i was shedding a lot of things from my childhood i was letting go of people and old friendships that just really just weren't any good for me anymore you know people were just honestly just in a sense just kind of leaving out of my life on their own so a lot of things i didn't even have to worry about you start removing certain things from your life certain people certain situations certain addictions you know um your life starts to become a lot more clear you start to have a lot more clarity i know what started it for me was definitely when after i left the goodwill i just took a leap of faith I have been asking for just 40 hours, you guys, and they wouldn't give it to me. They wouldn't give me that. They wouldn't give it to me. And I had been working with them for almost two years, and they wouldn't give it to me. And I had had a lot of problems. Um, I had a manager turn her back on me and all this other kind of stuff. And so I just took my leap of faith, and literally after I took that leap of faith, that's when I started believing in myself a lot more. And that started helping a lot with my mental health, with me believing in myself, not having this fear and doubt that triggers my anxiety, believe it or not. I was just so grateful. So after I left from that job, because it was really a negative space for me, and I moved on, that's when I started feeling a lot better in myself. Now, I was still in school at the time, and at that time, I was in my last two semesters, so when I left from that job and I went to this other job, I kind of went from out of the, I probably kind of went to the skillet a little bit, you know, with the fire. But in a sense, too, it was good because I wasn't worrying about pay. I had my hours, I, you know, all that. So on the back end, it was good. And I was appreciative of it because it was stressful with my school schedule. And so that, too, took a lot of stress off of me. So a lot of times you have to just change your surroundings and your situations for you to have a better mental health, pretty much mental clarity, and to be able to just live a better and prosperous life. Okay, you guys, so wrapping it up. So after I left that job, that was back in about 2014, no, 2000. Yeah, 2013, 2014. I left that job, went to this other job, and I was there for a year because it was actually a temp job. And then I wanted to get hired on full time. After that, I wound up moving into a better job <laughs> with better pay with a better schedule believe me with a better schedule and that helped me a lot it gave me time to not be so stressed out the job wasn't very stressful it gave me more time to really focus on my last semester and a half of school so thank god for that because i was able to press through i was still dealing with some form of anxiety but honestly i was not dealing with depression I was not dealing with that because I was not so stressed out. I wasn't so weighed down. I didn't feel like I had so many things to try to figure out or I didn't know what I was doing or I didn't feel like I was lost. I really was coming into a better place of myself. And plus, too, I was starting to love myself again because I was just not happy with me. I was just not happy with me. I was not happy with where I was. I was not happy with the people who were in my life and I just really had to realize that until you take control of your life and make the necessary changes you will not be where it is that you're wanting to be and once I started doing that they really started helping with my anxiety a lot and around that time I had discovered yoga 
around that time where I discovered yoga and I decided to, to start seeking therapy, therapy was one of the best decisions I could have made. Um, for one, a long time I didn't go to seek therapy. It was because I was so afraid of just being judged. The stigmatism of talking to a therapist or a psychotherapist or however you want to put it. Um, a lot of times people would, you know, just deem you as crazy. You know, and I know growing up, people will always say, oh, Esther, you're so crazy, you're so crazy. And I know they meant that from a good place. But a lot of days, I would literally feel crazy. That was literally how I would be feeling. <laughs> and so once I started going to therapy and <laughs> my counselor, she was the best. You guys, she really was the best. She really, she really was just able to break it down for me. She really just took the time to listen to me. For me to express myself i mean i cried i mean y'all i cried i mean i cried i cried about stuff that i hadn't even cried about in years and years and it just goes to show you that when you don't talk about things or release things from your life they tend to still linger and in a sense be attached to you until you actually let it go and I was still holding on to a lot of old hurts. I was holding on to a lot of old doubts and fears. I was holding on to a lot of preconceived ideas, assumptions. And it was just because I had internalized so much over the years. And until I had actually went and sat down and talked with someone, that's when I started seeing the changes happen in my life. When I started shedding all that stuff and just started letting it go, it started helping me with my anxiety so much. And honestly, even with my depression, I have not honestly felt depressed in a long time time and it is now 2018 and I can honestly say that I have not felt that way in a long time I might get sad at times but as far as like depressed and where I mean like I'm sad or down for like days and I just feel like I don't want to do anything that's been a long time and that's even with me being let go from my job last year I didn't even I didn't even fall down into depression during that so that's how I know that for me seeking therapy was the best decision for me in me and making sure that my mental health was getting back on track into where it is that I was needing to be needed to be for myself for my loved ones for my girlfriends for my friends for my family just for all of those people who are in my life that I just cherish and value as a part of my life I really I really started to realize that as long as you have those people who care about you who love you who truly support you and what it is that you do in spite of it if you may talk to them every day every week every month if those people have your back there's nothing else that you should be worrying about. No matter if you haven't hit that goal, that marker, or whatever it is that you had set for yourself, just know that you will attain it. But I had to learn that too, to not internalize my emotions and to not be afraid to actually express how you feel to people. Because again, a lot of times people will make you feel bad for expressing your true emotions because they don't want you to. Because a lot of times, sometimes that's the truth for them and even for yourself. So once I started doing that for myself and just being completely truthful and expressing my emotions and not internalizing and just not just actually just sitting and just being in my emotions and soaking, that helped me so much with my anxiety. And I'm telling you, when I feel I'm fixing to have some form of anxiety, I instantly know how to handle it. I instantly know how to channel that from it being an anxious energy into being a positive energy and I instantly start praying or I'll need to talk with someone about it or I'll go and journal or again I'll even do my yoga and meditation and yoga and meditation has really been a big lifesaver for me over the last almost a year and a half it has really been a game changer it started out with meditation and then I slowly transitioned to yoga and now I practice yoga almost on a daily and I just cannot imagine not doing my meditation or some form of prayer to myself with myself by myself every day it really does help me in being the best and for my mental health overall so all right queen so that is pretty much my I guess anxiety and depression story i just wanted to really just get on here and just shed some light on my story because again it is mental health awareness month and i just really felt that with me sharing my story and you know pretty much how i as a child internalized it and then into my pretty much 
young adult life and actually recognizing it and then finally getting to a place to where I actually went and spoke with someone to actually get help with it um would help somebody because I know a lot of people probably have actually gone through or are actually going through what I have gone through and just actually just not talking about it and just internalizing it because again we're afraid that people are going to be so judgmental you know or in a sense just do not care about it because a lot of times people will just do not care and you want to actually be able to share how you are feeling with people who you feel are going to actually value your emotions and what it is that you're actually going through so if you know it's someone that you can actually talk with and share your story or share what it is that you're going through that day or if you may be feeling you know anxious or sad or having some kind of fear or self-doubt or if you've been just in a sad state for some time i would highly recommend that you talk to someone that you really trust someone that you really know whether that be a friend a teacher a pastor god or even like how I did, went and spoke to an actual therapy counselor. Like, I highly would recommend it for people, especially my African American sisters, my African American community. I really would recommend it for you guys. I will leave some links down below so that way you guys can check it out if you're actually interested in actually just trying to you know work on your mental health or if you're like myself and you battle with anxiety and depression um to actually see how you can actually help or cope with those um, issues i guess you could say i really don't know how to categorize it because i again i really don't want to be in, have anxiety or to be to be depressed i want to eventually get to a place where i don't have any of that not saying that we won't go through periods of anxiety at times but i do not want to literally be walking around saying i have anxiety with the onset of depression i just want to be able to walk around and say hello my name is queen esther i'm 26 years old and i am the owner and founder of queen she me and that's what i want to be and that's who i'm destined to become because i know it i pray for it and i know that god will get me there so queens i hope you guys found this video very beneficial i hope that it sheds some light on my story and how far i have come come and just to just be a testimony for other people who again are silently battling with anxiety and depression so please take your mental health seriously because i realized too that i wasn't for a long time and once i did it changed my life for the better you guys so please queens for 2018 please take care of yourself again take care of your mind your body your spirit because where one is lacking i'm guaranteeing you the other two will start lacking too and you just want to make sure that you are at your best at your best mental capacity so you can be the best for your friends your loved ones and to be a better service to other people here on this earth as we're all here to serve a higher purpose so i just thank each of you for hanging out with me today queens and if you would please make sure that you subscribe down below make sure to give this video a thumbs up and definitely make sure to turn on the bell so that way you can be notified when i upload new content here on my channel okay so thank you so much for hanging out with me today queens i love each and every one of you and be blessed <laughs> see you guys on my next upload bye queen